sailors and welcome to your next Sailsmart Smart video. This week we are planning your very own sailing adventure. So it is time to find your treasure maps, rig your boats and let's set off into the sunset on a fantastic day on the water. So just before you put your point skate on, maybe we've got a bit of extra work to do first. And I'd say there's four things to think about. Where we're going, what if, who else needs to know, and when are we going? So let's start with where. Now, if you've got a treasure map and it's got a giant X on it with treasure, that's where you need to go. Give me a call, because I'm coming too. If you don't quite have a treasure map, well, some other types of treasure that you might want to head to are places where you could sit in the sun, places where it's nice and sandy, places where it's sandy and you can have a sand castle competition, somewhere that sells ice cream, and generally somewhere to have a break, a rest, before we go back. A rough rule of thumb, not these thumbs, a rough rule of thumb is your boat will travel at about three knots. That's a bit faster than three miles an hour. What that means is we don't want to be traveling for miles and miles because our boat isn't going to sail that fast and we might not get there in time. Likewise, we don't want to be going just around the corner because we'll be there really quick, we'll probably get bored and we'll end up sailing home. Let's make it a proper adventure on the water. Another thing about where we're going is to consider if you're in a harbour, on a river or setting out into the open sea. Generally, the larger area of water you're going to be sailing in, the bigger the waves and the wind you might expect. So if you're sailing on the Atlantic Ocean, you're going to get some big waves. If you're sailing on a small river or in a small lake, you probably don't have to worry about waves quite that much. The bigger the waves, the bigger the boat we're going to want. So for this, you're going to be looking at a big double-handed boat, like an RS Quest or a Wayfarer. The reason we're going to pick these boats is because they have something called a high freeboard. Freeboard is the distance between the gunnel, which is where you sit, and the water. Now, if that's a very, very small distance and you're sat very close to the water, you're going to get wet. If the freeboard's really high, then you're gonna stay a little bit drier through the wind and the waves and the splashes. And for a day sail, we wanna keep pretty dry. Once you get to this spot you've been planning to get to where X marks the spot and you're gonna dig up your treasure, you're gonna need to park your boat. So the best way to do that is probably with an anchor. So you're gonna need to pack one of these. This is a Bruce anchor. And that means it's really, really good for mud, for sand, sort of shingle and a few other things. And I've got rocks, this might not be the best. But we've got an anchor, we're going to need some chain on the end of this and some warp as well. Warp is the funny word for rope, just rope. Make sure you've got an anchor so you can park when you want your lunch break. When deciding where you're going to have your lunch break, you're probably going to want to look at a chart. A chart is a sea map. You might know what a map is. You open it up, it's got a picture of the earth, you know where the big hills are, you know where the toilets are, and you know where the roads are, and you know where to walk and where not to walk so you don't walk off a cliff. Pretty good. For sailing, we need a chart because we don't need to know about hills. We don't need to know about roads. We need to know about rocks under the water. We need to know where it's gonna be nice to land. And we need to know where the tide is strong and where the tide is weak. A chart will look something like this. You can see there's colors. The yellow's the land and the white is the deep water. There's lots and lots of numbers and loads and loads of information. It's probably worth getting someone to help you Find where you want to go on your chart. Your training centre or club will probably have one you can borrow. Once we know where we're going and how far it is, then we can start to decide what we're going to wear. Some of this is going to be decided by the weather on the day. If it's raining, if it's sunny, those sorts of things will change what we're wearing. A wetsuit, probably a good idea. But if it's not very windy, you're probably not going to fall in and it's really, really hot, a wetsuit might actually be a bad idea. So 
get some advice from your local training centre or your local club and see what the weather's like on the day. On to section two and thinking about what if we're going to need to take some stuff with us. We're out all day. We're going to need some equipment. But what can I take? Some books for some light reading. No. My favourite teddy bear. No. My pillow for a sleep. No. A candle in case it gets dark. No. A bunch of flowers in case it's Mother's Day. No. A lunchbox. Now we're talking. The best way to come up with your kit list is to think what if. And I very quickly got to the point of, what if I get hungry? Bring some food. You're gonna want your lunch. But just in case things don't go entirely to plan, what if we're on the water a little bit longer than we thought, we might want some spare rations. I'm gonna take a couple of Nutrigrain bars or cereal bars or something like that to give me a bit of extra energy just in case I get hungry. Now let's get serious. Sandwiches, cucumber, soggy bread, bad plan, lettuce, now we're talking. What if I need the loo? Because it might happen. I would plan that into my day trip. Maybe there's somewhere halfway that you could stop or maybe where you're stopping for lunch, maybe they've got some toilets. What if I get cold? Well, take an extra jacket. An extra jacket, an extra woolly hat, that's gonna keep you warm just in case. You don't want to be wearing your spare clothes when you leave. Nice and toasty, plus an extra jacket. Similarly, what if it rains? Take a rain jacket, obviously. What if the wind dies? There's no wind, how are we gonna get home? We'll come on to weather forecast in a minute, but something you might also want to take is a paddle. So if you do get no wind, you can paddle yourself home. What if I hurt myself? Well, take a little first aid kit. Realistically, you might get a cut finger, you might hurt yourself, something small. Plasters are the thing you're gonna need. You might also want an extra bandage or something like that. If you're saying at your local club or center, which I think is a good idea, they should have one of these in the safety boat for you. What if the boat breaks? Now, I've been sailing a little while and I can promise you boats break. No matter how much you check them, no matter how much you look after them, they're waiting for that one time you don't take that thing on the water and it's that thing that's gonna break. They're out to get you, so watch out. Take a little repair kit. What have I got in my toolkit? Well. I base this on my boat because I know what bits and bobs break and how I'm going to fix them. So I've got a screwdriver and a spanner, I've got a multi-tool, I've got cellar tape, and I've also got a few of the spare blocks and bits of rope that I think might break. With those bits and bobs, I can probably fix anything that's likely to break. Have I got a spare rudder? No, because I don't think that's likely to break. What if I get lost? Well, some of that is up to you before you go sailing. If it's thick fog and you go sailing, you might get lost. And that would be a silly time to go sailing. But it might be that you go sailing, you turn around and you're not quite sure. Something that I carry is a compass because this will tell me which way north is and I can look at my chart and work out which way I've got to go. Okay, I've got to go south. I can use my compass to point south and I know which way to sail. What if I need somebody else's help? Well, if you're in desperate, desperate need of help, you can just shout to other people on the water and get them to come and help. A whistle is also really good for attracting attention. And if you're really, really stuck, you're gonna need a phone to dial the Coast Guard on 999 or probably better for sailing, is a VHF radio, channel 16, and you're gonna need a mayday call. If you're unsure about a mayday call or phoning the Coast Guard, probably leave that to an adult or your instructor. It's not something to mess about with. What if I capsize? Well, we want to make sure that all of our important bits and bobs are tied into the boat so they don't float off. 
When you tie your tool kit and your first aid kit into the boat, you want to make sure that they're low down, low down to the sides or to the front of your boat. That way they won't interfere with the stability. You might also want a dry bag or a robust bag that you can tie everything into and strap it to the boat. This way it's going to stay dry, but it's also not going to float off. It's important that what if I capsize is a what if. If it's a when I capsize because it's a bit windy, it's probably not the right day to go for a day trip. It should be a what if. If anything is a, I know that's going to happen, you're gonna wanna change that before you go afloat. So, number three, who else needs to know? Well, one of the most important things you need to do whenever you go on the water, no matter what it is you're doing, you must tell someone ashore what you're doing, where you're going, and most importantly, when you're going to be back. This way, if you get into trouble, they'll know that you're not home at the right time and they can raise the alarm. A fantastically modern way to do this is with the RYA Safe Tracks app. There's loads of other videos on this and it's definitely worth learning now and being super safe. Most importantly, for your sailing adventure, make sure you do it with your local training center or sailing club. They're gonna have the instructors, the experience, the knowledge and the safety boat to have a great time afloat. Section four, when do we go? Do we go now? I'm ready, let's go. Not yet. Once we've got everything planned, we then need to pick an ideal day. If you're sailing in a tidal area, you're gonna want to be sailing with the tide, ideally on the way there and on the way back. If you sail where I sail on the south coast, the tide could be pretty strong and you might not even be able to sail against it. That's gonna be a pretty poor day out. Tides are entirely predictable and you can check them years and years in advance. So there's no excuse for not knowing the tide on the day. Once we've got the perfect day with the perfect tide, we can then think about weather. Weather is very, very changeable and therefore you're not gonna be able to know until a couple of days before whether or not it's gonna be a good day to go on the water. Anything like fog, really light winds or really strong winds are gonna be a no-no. And it's better to be safe than sorry and postpone your trip than get into trouble on the water. So if you're not sure about checking the weather, check out our weather forecast video to learn a little bit more. Good job sailors, it's time for you to get active and start planning your sailing adventure. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you soon for another Sail Smart video. All the best.